Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to diagnose a little bit and how to replace your bad ABS sensors. So I'm going to go ahead and show you exactly what that is first. So here we got our 07 GMC Sierra Classic. Now, ever since I bought this truck, it has always had the ABS, the brake light, like all that stuff was on in the gauge cluster. So clearly, um, as soon as I took the wheels off, it was pretty easy to notice. As you can see, this wire here, let me see if I can get it in focus for you. There it is. So yeah, obviously chewed up, but the main issue I believe was the fact that it was completely pulled out of the sensor itself. So I mean, I just took it off considering it's like this one clip here. Very simple to do. And this is our Duralast replacement part that I've got. As you can see, ABS sensor, that is the part number. Um, I'm not 100% sure if it's the same throughout all 99 through 06, but I'm pretty sure the process of replacing it is. So here is our new sensor. I'm gonna go ahead and open it. Just give me a quick second. All right. So here it is. It looks a lot nicer. But off the bat, we got our clip, you know, which hopefully is the same. So you want to make sure and verify that. But yeah, it definitely looks the same. So everything on it looks exactly the same. The sensor itself, I believe, is just like maybe magnetic or something like that. But yeah, our wires are ripped clean out of the current one. So this should help us. Now, let's see. It also comes with a new bolt. And the bolt does come loctited already, pre-loctited, so that is a cool feature. And it also comes with, I believe, some grease. So there's that. And I'm assuming, I don't know if you need to grease like the end of the sensor. I don't know if that's the proper protocol. But as we get into it, I will either look it up or find some way to know for sure so let's continue now how to diagnose it so you will have a few symptoms i believe you would anyways so as i said we hop up in our 99 through 06 sierra now essentially shut that off we turn our truck on it is indeed very loud change engine oil get rid of that service brake system brothers that is what I was trying to show you so I mean it's clearly telling you that you need to service your brakes and uh, as you can see we got our brake light the ABS light and these other two I suppose are irrelevant for this video but those two oh my god Jesus Christ so yeah but the brake and the ABS light is definitely what you're wanting to look for um other than that we should be pretty good like i said i was able to diagnose it on this truck because as i was putting these 26s on 35s on it i looked in here and uh the plug is right here right on top of the shock tower and uh you just followed it down and it was actually wrapped inside of the coil here so clearly got pulled out and then I traced it back down to where it was supposed to go and I mean what do you know it wasn't connected so I'm quite sure that is the reason the truck still stops and everything just fine but I do like to not have warning lights as well as if I do need the ABS for whatever reason I would like it to work brothers so for now I'm gonna give you guys a view of the truck as well as I'm going to include a tool list here these are the things that you're going to need, so make sure you have something of the sort. I mean, you know, if you're a true mechanic or whatever, surely you can MacGyver up something out of whatever you got. So let's jump right into it, boys. I'm going to go ahead and start by jacking it up, taking the wheels off, and I have spacers, so I'm going to be taking those off as well. So let's get to it. All 
right boys so there it is quick and simple like I said we only jacked that up enough just to be able to get the wheel off because that's all that we essentially need to do and safety wise it would indeed be advised to use a jack stand anytime you know you're lifting a vehicle also the proper way to probably take the lug nuts off is to first loosen them with a breaker bar I know the impact isn't exactly the best but it's the way I'm doing it brothers because I'm the one doing it so you can do it however you'd like when you do it now continuing on like I said here's our clip that is our connector for our ABS and it should run somewhere around here and uh, might be a little hard to see but right there is where it should connect right back there in between here that is our ABS sensor I hope so what we're gonna do from here boys is we're gonna go ahead and remove our brake caliper as well as the brake rotor which should give us access to our sensor so let's get it all right guys so next order of operation like I said we're going to be removing our brake calipers and to do that the main bolts is one up here on the top and one down here on the bottom and that will release your entire brake caliper so that's the way I'm gonna do it you can do it several ways but I find that to be the easiest and once again we're just gonna use the impact because why not so there's that one for some reason on mine I got a 19 millimeter on the top and the lower fits an 18 millimeter so I don't exactly know why or have a reason but this is our bolt more than likely this bolt was probably replaced and is not the original bolt so that will be the reason for the difference in bolt size yeah that one was a little tight eh? now you never want to have your brake caliper getting yanked by the hose so being the fine gentleman that I am, we're going to put her there. I don't even think this brake rotor is the correct rotor neither, to be honest with you. Because it's not wearing the brake pads evenly. But that's another story for another time. So, like I said, your brake rotor should indeed just come off of this bad boy. Oh yeah, there's like trash all wrapped in it too. That's cool. Yeah, so our wheel bearing. Not bad. Whatever play there is, is... Oh my God! Jesus! Yeah, so that'll be why you always want to support your brake caliper good. Because then you'll do stuff like that. Which is not ideal for the condition of your brake calipers or anything, honestly. So, okay, hopefully that does not fall again while we're messing with it. But I'm trying to dig trash out of my wheel bearing, okay. Okay, so here we are. As you can see, we now have access to our ABS sensor. So that's awesome. And we should be able to just simply unbolt and rerun it and this job will essentially be complete aside from the reverse of what we just did so cool beans boys all right so moving on brothers we've got our five millimeter allen wrench that we use to break our allen head bolt loose on our abs sensor so we simply remove it so i mean as you can see this one may or may not be original i honestly do not know but it looks like it has some rust on the threads where potentially the the uh loctite or thread sealer whatever you want to call it potentially was now let's see how the abs sensor itself comes out and also i recommend using gloves damn that thing looks long dude i might have to um I might have to uh, compare it with my original, so that's what we'll do now. 
or not my original but my new one that I, I have so we walk around oh nah it's good so as you could see we compare the old to the new and we see that they very much do look identical so we're gonna take the lube that was given to us and lube up our shaft that protrudes out of the sensor that way it will slide in without getting damaged as well as possibly helps keep the signal going I'm not 100 percent sure but lubing it up is kind of self-explanatory i'm going to just cut off the top of this which is included with the duralast sensor and then i'm just going to shove it in there you know and kind of finagle it just get it a little bit on there i don't think it needs that much so i'm going to go ahead and do that and i'll bring you guys back for the installation all right guys so i figured while we have it apart here um it'd be a good idea uh kind of hard to see but hopefully it will allow you to see what's going on so inside of there the hub itself has like little splines which is essentially what the abs sensor reads so it's a good idea to turn this by hand you can see the splines turning inside and just make sure they're all there that way you don't have any discrepancies in your abs system as well as uh, it's a good idea to check your wheel bearings and all that stuff so i mean as you can see my tie rod here well i don't know if you could see it on camera but like i'm moving it and it just has play so i may just need to tighten up my uh nut here which is what i'm going to do that way you know she's more solid or whatever as well as check your ball joints like everything honestly on this truck like this is not very good guys i don't know if you guys could see it but i literally have play in my upper ball joint and i mean it is what it is guys uh before i actually finish this up i will go through and try to tighten all of this but like i said we're just here to look at our splines because we're doing our abs sensor so that all looks good um i decided before i actually lube up my sensor what i'm going to do is i have it here right so i'm gonna actually run it into place where it's supposed to go that way i can clean it off while it's in that position and apply the grease and install it all in one go that way i don't have grease on it and then i try to run it back behind the heat shield and get dirt any type of contaminants you do not want because this is like a direct port to like your wheel bearing itself so if you get junk in there it will definitely decrease the life so very simple guys and i mean obviously i'm gonna after it's cleaned up and greased up i'm gonna insert it in the hole and then use the new hex head bolt or allen head bolt whatever that they gave us with the loctite on the threads to secure it so that's what i'm gonna do now all right so we got our new abs sensor installed using the provided allen head bolt with the loctite on it routed correctly um we do have a little bit of free play here i do not think it will get in the way of anything but just make sure to check your clearances before driving your vehicle um i did in fact zip tie it to the upper control arm here just to avoid it getting binded up in the coil i don't know exactly how it happened previously but it had an issue so i'm just making sure it doesn't happen again um there's a, f a few holes to where you can mount your connector itself so like i said this was initially just sitting up here but it could possibly go here i don't really know so just make sure you connect it the correct way it'll have kind of like that little nipple right there on the top as you can see and that will go with the clip portion of the connector so that should be good now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and check our work right so the abs um system essentially like recalibrates every single time you turn the truck on but uh, the only thing that i will say is as we have the brake caliper off right now do not press the brakes on your truck all we're simply gonna do is just turn the key and hopefully our lights turn off which they did not <laughs> so 
our service brake system is still on I don't know if it takes a couple of cycles or not I was told that as soon as you turn it on it recalibrates or whatever so maybe once we put it all back together and I take it for a drive we'll hopefully find out that the lights come off eventually but without taking it to the dealer and running your uh, brake light module or the ABS module codes there's not really a way to know so this was definitely an issue though so maybe once it you know calibrates gets a couple miles on it uh, it should work a lot better hopefully so I'm gonna go ahead and start reassembling and I will bring you guys back reassembly is essentially the same thing pretty much so I mean from here we can go ahead and start as we did the last time uh, it's kind of hard to do with the left hand but so there's that so our brake rotor is now back on um, I'm going to definitely use both hands to reassemble my caliper because as you've seen it fell so just make sure to take extra precaution you know even zip tie it up there or whatever is needed to do the job correctly um, worst came to worst whenever that fell it could have ruptured the brake line or did whatever so just make sure to take extra caution when doing that so let me do that after I get it all reassembled I'm probably just gonna put it all back together and take it for a drive so if I do get the lights to turn off I will update you guys right now all right so upon driving off the brake light turned off I've been cruising the truck around a little bit you know trying to get her to do the thing but so far the ABS light has stayed on however we no longer have our trouble code saying to service the the brake um, We'll even try, you know, like the whole nine yards here. So as you see, she comes on, change engine oil. And I believe that's the only one it's got now. So as you can see, the brake light and all that good stuff still works. Change engine oil. And earlier, right away, it went from change engine oil to uh, service the brake system. So as you can see, we got rid of that. So that's cool. We did indeed make it work a little bit better. We just need our ABS light for some reason to reset. Maybe there's an issue with the ABS module. I don't really know, but considering that the ABS sensor uh, made the brake light come on, I would assume if I had another issue with another sensor, the brake light would stay on. But this is going to wrap it up here, boys. Hopefully you guys learned something, gained a little bit of confidence in doing, you know, a simple task such as this one yourself. You can do it with simple hand tools. You do not need an impact. Um, definitely do need a jack of some sort, but most vehicles come with one. So don't be afraid to get out there, get your hands dirty, boys, and do the damn thing. Save you some money as well as make your vehicle run better and safer. So make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Stay tuned for the next one. We will see what we get into next, boys. Deuces.